Thank you, Chairman Lamborn, for convening today's hearing, and I'd like to thank you for your support and engagement on this critical issue. I'd also like to be able to thank my many Western colleagues who have joined in the effort to be able to continue to work with me to be able to safeguard Western water rights. I'd also like to be able to express my thanks to Chris Trees for coming out from Colorado to be able to testify. Chris is the manager of the external affairs of the Colorado River Water Conservation District, which covers most of Western Colorado. Chris manages a department responsible for the River District's legislative and regulatory governmental relations in Denver and Washington, D.C., as well as the district's water education and public inf information efforts. In short, Chris describes his job as responsibilities of everything that you don't want lawyers and engineers doing. And I'd also like to be able to express my thanks to Randy Parker from Utah for making the trip to D.C. to be able to testify on the Water Rights Protection Act. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to be able to ask unanimous consent to be able to enter into the record the entirety of Senator Wayne Allard's oral testimony given at the May 2001 Committee on Resources hearing entitled Bypass Flows on National Forest Lands. If there's no objection, so ordered. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to be able to quote part of his testimony here. Colorado actually has been pretty effective in setting up a program where they can manage their in-stream flows to protect Colorado rivers from future development. We have a basic underlying philosophy that anybody who wants to use that water simply needs to go through our water courts, justify their need, verify that they will not injure any other water users that are relying on that water for their livelihood or for green parks in cities or other needs within the state. Since 1990, the United States Department of Agriculture has attempted to use some of their federal land use permitting authority to require that the water be turned over to them. And this, this is contrary to what we do in the state of Colorado and many Western states. And actually, as late as 1997, there was a task force that was convened to evaluate this policy. And it was determined that there was no authorization in any legislation giving them that authority. Former Senator Hank Brown, at the same hearing, referenced the USDA using the same tactics to go after agricultural interests in West Slope of Colorado back in the 1980s. I bring this up, Mr. Chairman, simply to point out, while the ski areas may be fine with the Forest Service's current posture towards them, and the groundwater directive may have been withdrawn by the last administration after we had updated the Water Rights Protection Act to address it, a different administration can simply reverse the current policy and go right back to using this tactic to extort private property from its legal owners. Over many decades, federal attempts to manipulate federal permit lease land and management processes to circumvent long-established state water law and hijack privately held water rights have sounded the alarm for all non-federal water users that rely on these water rights for their livelihood. Federal government overreach infringement on the private property rights that led to the introduction of the original version of this bill in the 113th Congress involved U.S. Forest Service attempt to require the transfer of privately held water rights to the federal government as a permit condition on the national forest system lands. There is no compensation for the transfer of these privately held water rights, despite the fact that many stakeholders have invested their own capital in the developing, uh, development of them, and in some cases to the tune of millions of dollars. This Forest Service permit condition had already heard a number of stakeholders in my home state of Colorado, including the Powderhorn Ski Area in Grand Junction and the Breckenridge Ski Resort. The same nefarious tactics have been used in Utah. Nevada, and other Western states where agencies have been required to surrender uh, the possession of water rights in exchange for approving the conditional use of grazing allotments. This federal water grab has broad implications that have begun to extend beyond recreation in the farming and ranching communities and now threatening municipalities and other businesses. Then in 2004, the Water Service proposed a groundwater directive that would have expanded the agency's reach over groundwater and established new bureaucratic hurdles to interfere with private water right uses to be able to access their water. Make no mistake, the goal of the directive was to further federalize water resources, erode state authority, and pave the way for unilateral mandates on state water resources while overriding decades of long-standing water law and policy and states alone hold jurisdiction over and over their groundwater. Though the Forest Service has ultimately withdrawn the controversial groundwater directive, there are no guarantees the directive won't similarly come back. Given the withdrawal of the groundwater directive, this net legislation was updated accordingly. Mr. Chairman, this is a matter of state water rights, 
priority systems and private property rights in the Western United States. Uh, this discussion's draft, I think, will lend itself uh, to achieving the goal of protecting those entities. I thank you, and I yield back my time. Okay, thank you. We